Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Watching the Gun Law TV. I'm Watching the Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we're going to, have to be talking about an event that's garnered some news attention in the last couple of weeks. It actually garnered some attention late last year and has now reared its ugly head. And I do want to kind of warn all of you at the outset of this video that I am personally familiar with some of the individuals involved in this, and I'm a big fan of this company. So I'm gonna have to try to tread lightly today as I discuss this. And really the angle I wanna come at this from is to take a look at what happens when we give too much unfettered discretion and power to government agents that we don't trust. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about this is what happens when you give your attorney general a blank check. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is the ongoing trials and tribulations and current lawsuit which is being waged by the attorney general against federal way discount guns. Now we have already talked about this case when it first broke on these videos right here, but there has been some significant developments and I think it's a learning opportunity for us to realize what happens when we pass some of this gun control legislation and give a bunch of discretion to our attorney general. Now some caveats about this presentation okay number one this video is not meant to be a hit piece on federal way discount guns i know the people down there i know the owner personally i like them a great deal i stop by i visit the folks down there i think they got a great operation they got an incredibly loyal customer base down there and they've been in business for a long time i like everything about them okay i am not going to condemn what they did however i am also not going to condone what they did okay i am taking a very neutral position on this and as I said I do have personal relationships with people down there and I like them greatly okay that being said as we recall the Attorney General decided that there was a need to go out and do a sweep of approximately 25 FFLs around the state to see how many of them were selling high-capacity magazines after the enactment of RCW 9.41.370 better known as our standard capacity magazine ban now according to the complaint filed by the Attorney General on four separate occasions Agents on behalf of the state were able to go into federal way discount guns and purchase magazines exceeding more than 10 rounds of capacity. Now, whether the exact number was six or eight, I don't recall, but the initial allegations was there was approximately a half dozen, maybe a couple more than that, magazines unlawfully so sold by federal way discount guns sometime after July 1st of last year. That would have been a violation of RCW 9.41.370. Now, theoretically, the employees who were responsible for selling those magazines could have been charged with a crime. But the reality of the situation is, is it's a gross misdemeanor with no mandatory jail time and it does not have any long reaching implications on an individual. And so that's not necessarily an effective tool if you're trying to squish a company out of business. But instead, what a lot of people don't realize is that we also, when we passed RCW 9.41.370, we also passed RCW 9.41.375, an entire Consumer Protection Act associated with the standard magazine capacity. Now, to give you an idea of how that law reads, it reads as follows. Distributing, selling, offering for sale, or facilitating the sale, distribution, or transfer of a large capacity magazine online is an unfair or deceptive act or practice or unfair method of competition in the conduct of trade or commerce for the purposes of cons the Consumer Protection Act, Chapter 19.86 of the RCW. Now, what that very vague terminology really means is that the Attorney General has absolute unfettered discretion to launch an investigation against federal way discount guns and then to civilly fine them an amount of $7,500 per magazine. Now, if the initial reports are true that there was approximately six to eight magazines sold, if the Attorney General fined Federal Way Discount Guns $7,500 per magazine, they're looking at a fine somewhere in the neighborhood of $45,000 to $60,000. Now, that is a hefty fine. However, one of the other things that this statute does, and I will point out that this is also associated with now House Bill 1240, 
as well as Senate Bill 5078, is it allows the Attorney General complete unfettered discretion to launch as thorough of an investigation as humanly possible to go and subpoena all of the records, all of the bank records, everything you could possibly imagine, all at the expense of the respondent here, in this case, Federal Way Discount Guns. And upon doing so in this case, the Attorney General is now alleging that they have sales records of over 2,000, in fact, 26 hundred magazines unlawfully sold by federal way discount guns sometime after july 1st when the law went into effect now again i am neither condoning nor condemning that i am neither confirming or denying whether that happened because i do not know any of the specifics as it relates to that i am basing this on news reports and what the attorney general's filings have said but if in fact the attorney general now has proof that 2600 high capacity magazines were sold despite the fact that there was an unconstitutional law in place and he and federal way discount guns were to be fined seventy five hundred dollars per magazine well now guess what we're not talking about a fine of somewhere between forty five and sixty thousand dollars no now we're actually talking about a fine in the neighborhood of nineteen and a half million dollars let me say that again that's it right there 19 and a half million dollars now even if the attorney general had some stroke of benevolence in him and decided well hey i'm only going to find you 10 percent of what's actually owed here hey that's still almost two million dollars and so what i want all of you to understand is is that when we take a look at Senate Bill 5078, which just basically gives this unbridled discretion to the Attorney General's office to do this to any FFL for any reason. And we take a look at the language that's in House Bill 1240, Washington's new assault weapon ban, which is about to be signed into law as well. All of the components that are associated with these now unlawful assault weapons could also subject an FFL to this exact type of civil liability. And so what you have here is a situation where a legislature could pass unconstitutional laws, and while we're waiting for the courts to catch up and strike them down, the attorney general then can use his unbridled discretion to go out and systematically shut FFLs down. Now again, is it possible that the folks at Federal Way Discount Guns own some of this and put themselves in this position? That is entirely possible. Again, I'm not making any comment on that. But what we do need to understand is that even if we are successful at fighting these laws, even if justice ultimately prevails and the courts truly apply the correct constitutional standards to all of these unlawful gun grabbing measures, it does not stop the attorney general and his office from using the absolute power of the state to destroy the FFL industry. Listen, if any of you are interested in helping out the folks at Federal Way Discount Guns, we will put information down in the description box down below. We have publicized this in the past on them. And again, they are in this industry. You may have strong opinions about what they did, whether it was right or wrong. You are entitled to your opinions. We never want to tell you here at Washington Gun Law how to think, but we do want to give you all the stuff to think about. Listen, in the meantime, if you have any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, that's okay. All of that information is in the description box down below. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.